Well, hi, this is Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today I'm going to take you into Fort King George Historical Site. This is one of the oldest settlements in the United States. This is really a neat place. I just watched the video that they have here and I really strongly recommend that when you first come, watch the video. And then you can find out about the Wally Indians. Uh, the Wally actually got their name, it's French, when they were discovered back in the 1500s by a French explorer. 1500s, think about that. And here's some uh, information. As a matter of fact, this is a little bit of a dugout canoe that they found here. And then we continue up through the Spanish mission. And look at here, they've even found some artifacts here. Look at the remnants of the old Spanish sword, pottery, that kind of stuff. Neat. And we'll be going down here and looking at Fort King George, or at least what they have rebuilt to look like it. Look at this. And this will probably be helpful. I know it is to me. Just actually show you how it was structured at the point of the Black River and the Altamaha River. Neat, I like this. And then what a lot of people may not realize, this was a huge, huge timber town back in the day. And um, it was known for the Georgia pine and they shipped millions of tons overseas to Europe. And uh, you can see how that was all brought down and loaded into ships. And that gives you an idea. That was lumber shipped from Darien to the Isthmus of Panama. Look at that. Look at that. Walking out of the museum, all kinds of trails are here. Be aware of the alligators. We'll go down here to the fort. It's a beautiful, beautiful day in Darien. Just so so much information here. Think about sawmills here 200 years ago. There's the ruins of the old sawmills that were here 200 years ago. Isn't that something? They called them tidal pool powered. Example of the Wally Indian structures. They were made of clay and thatch. We'll continue our walk down here to the fort. Now, this is from architectural drawings. This has been rebuilt. It's not the original fort. It fell into oblivion, I guess, over time. Built in 1721 and uh, originally started off with British soldiers who were basically retirees for lack. They call it the infirm unit, older guys. And then later, Oglethorpe brought Scottish Highlanders here as a defense for Savannah uh, up from St. Simons. And then you see a lot of Scottish names here in Darien. As a matter of fact, it's called McIntosh County. Isn't that something? All kinds of neat things here. Look at this. I'm looking forward to this. So we'll make our way into the garrison here. And I'm sure it would have looked a lot different back in the day. These would have been higher, but you can still see uh, where the moat was running. And then the parapets for the higher dirt embankments to keep people out. So this is referred to as the blockhouse. This is a blockhouse. And this would have been the main area that they used to protect the fort. Uh, this is where all the cannons, and as you'll notice here, you'll see the big holes are for cannons, the small holes are for muskets. So, overlooking the river. So let's go inside and see what this looks like. And they would have had cannon placement. This place is really well fortified. And it was to protect the uh, 
the area from ships coming up the river. You can see the larger cannons out there and the Altamaha River. Interesting. I'll just go up here on the second floor. Look at this. So again, you can see where the guns would point out. They needed to protect. There you go. So I think down these steps is where they kept their powder and shot and those types of things, if need be, where it would be cool and under lock and key. Yep, you can see that. And then as we go here, you can see probably was the only way to get up and down. There is a hatch to where they probably moved. Yeah, here you go. It shows an example of all the powder that was located in here. Interesting. Cool. So as we come out of the blockhouse, there's actually a small town area here. It's kind of interesting. Uh, this would have been you know, where the soldiers lived, blacksmith shop, they had a brew house. <laughs> yeah, very British. But they had a lot of things that were here. And uh, they've actually rebuilt a lot of these into a big, you know, something that looks very period for the time. So let's see what these look like. So leaving the block house, we can actually see the barracks. And, and this would have been the guard house. So I guess this was your 24 hour watch. And it looks like uh, maybe sleeping quarters for maybe two, top and bottom guardhouse. And we'll walk down here to the uh, bakery and the blacksmith shop. This would have been an open air bakery for the period. You can actually see the old ovens. Look at that. And this is the last week of August, a little hot, so I can only imagine what that was like. Probably cooked their meals here too. But this is in the far corner. Every corner has a, uh, a guardhouse to overlook the corner of the area. Leaving the bakery, we find the blacksmith shop. Blacksmiths were a big deal back then. Not only did they take care of all the implements, but they were pretty much the guys that kept all the armament and guns and those types of things going. They were very important people. You can see his forge. Interesting. There's a couple of these buildings on site, um, and they refer to this, if you'll notice, the, some of these buildings here actually have planks, and this is called bark shedding pretty much just what they split off the side of the trees. And this is for the indigenous or the Indian folks who lived here in the area. And they were their scouts. And they just had a very simple, humble place to stay, not much to it. There's several of these here on the site. These were the big guns here that were actually protecting the, protecting the area, protecting the river. And you can actually see the river over there. There it is. So if you were unfortunate enough to be Spanish, flying that flag, uh, this would have met your destiny. And that would have been a bad day. Very bad day. They had small mortars. <laughs> oh, man. Of course, you got to have the privy, a four-seater. Ah, cotton. Look at this. We're gonna walk outside the grounds here just so we can see where the river comes up so you can get a view of that. Uh, I think I'll take that to heart. We'll just walk a little ways down and this would have been river access. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if I saw my chart right, 
That is Black Creek that's running into here. And this is the Altamaha River that you see here coming down that way. And then eventually running into the big primary artery going all the way to the ocean. Some folks coming in on a boat. And here's the interesting thing, a little tidbit here about the Altamaha River. This actually goes all the way up to the Altmulgee and eventually goes to my hometown in Macon. So that it actually bring lumber, cotton, all those types of things down the river. Coming up from the river, there is the enlisted men's barracks. A good thing is they at least had some windows right there that they could at least pick up some of these nice breezes off the river. I know that was welcome for this period of time. And you could see they could scoot right out the door and load these cannons up if they needed to. All by design. Good military design. But I think we can go inside the barracks. Let's see what we can find here. Oh yeah. Now think about this. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Salt. Small beer. Biscuit. Look at that. Imagine this both served as heat and maybe cooking. I'm not quite sure about that. And then you can see the bunks or the racks as we would call them. And they're places where they would sit and have their meals. And dirt floors. And of course they had their shells. They had to run out the door quickly and start feeding the cannons. And you can actually see the old wrought iron candlestick holders. Isn't this something? Think about this now for comfort. Oh, telling you, this was a hard life. And this would have been the primary view up the river. So they would have caught the ship's backside as they went up the river where they would have had less defensive posture. And they would have just taken these big old cannons here and let them have it. So let's see, maybe we can get a view of the river from here. Let's see, there you go. There's the main gate. There's the main entrance from the blockhouse. And this would have been the officer's quarters. I'm gonna make the assumption they probably had more than one here. And uh, their surroundings were a bit better. At least they had wooden floors. And they were, had two fireplaces, one on each side. Look at that. Fireplace on both sides. Bunks top and bottom. But this was located right next to the enlisted men, I guess to keep order. And notice this is old, what they call post and beam structure. Look at this. Done a great job here rebuilding this. Great job. Well, that's interesting. You can uh, actually see the grounds behind me. What a neat tour, I enjoyed that. Now I'm gonna walk down here to the corner. They've actually got some nature trails through here and let's go take advantage of that. I bet, I bet it's pretty through the marshes and around the river here and we'll see if we see some wildlife. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't have teeth. It's pretty and here's the nature trail. And, oh, I can see the marshes. Let's walk over here to the side first. You can see the marshes off in the distance. Look at that. We go for miles. And uh, let's enjoy the nature trail. I bet this is pretty. Well, as I walk along the trails, I can see Mr. Crab here. Oh, they're all over the place. And he is 
looking at me going, you are a big thing, go away. I'm gonna hide in the grass where you can't see me. There he is, I'm gonna leave you alone, fella. As I walk along the nature trail, look at this. Look at the view of that beautiful marsh. Look at that, isn't that something? It's just gorgeous. Ah, the trail is really changing now. Look at all the beautiful moss hanging from this holly. There's holly here and all the red cedar. Look at this, what a pretty view. This is really nice. We have reached the fork in the road. The trail continues this way, but we are gonna take a second here and just deviate and go up here and take a marsh view. And if you've never seen these coastal marshes in Georgia, oh my goodness, look at this tree. Would you look at that? Look at that live oak. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. We're going to come down here and see if we can see a view of the marsh. I'm not too sure we're going to get much. It's a little overgrown. But we're going to try. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Now, if you go to ilovervlife.com and go to the gallery, you'll see a ton of pictures. And you're welcome to share them if you want to. Beautiful, beautiful King George. So we'll continue on the trail. The beautiful live oak in the background. Pretty, huh? And uh, we'll come out of the marsh walk here. And let's see what's on up the trail. Oh, this is interesting. Look at all the sable palmetto. Look at that. Isn't that something? That one's old. And they go all the way up here through the trail. <laughs> Look at all this moss. It's like going back in time. All the little crabs running around. Uh, it's August, so, you know, do you need a little bit of mosquito spray? Maybe a little bit. I haven't been bit. A few yellow flies. It's really not bad this time of year. All the crabs trying to get away. <laughs> They're everywhere. Look at this. Oh my gosh. And this was something I almost skipped. Here off on the edge of the marsh is a Highlander's cottage. Look at this. Almost missed this. Caroline's cottage. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at the front yard of Caroline's cottage. Let's see if we can peek inside. Look at this. This would have been the Highlander's Cottage. Post and beam and thatch. Clay, probably clay and straw. Very simple little fireplace. The front yard would have been the marsh, right past all these Spanish mossed trees right here on the edge. Look at that. Pretty. Caroline's Cottage. Don't miss this if you come. As you come up from the nature trail and past the museum, well, you definitely want to take advantage of this to see these beautiful, beautiful views. We're going to walk up to the old cemetery. Look at that. And we'll walk up to the final resting place of the old soldiers. So up under the trees here are the graves of many of the old soldiers who were here during the early 1700s.
These were here from 1721 to 1727. More than 140 British soldiers lost their lives here. Sad. And the only markings on the stones, soldiers of Fort King George. Now under this massive, massive live oak, this thing is probably five feet across at the base. This is an old tabby structure. So there was three inhabitants that lived on this land, this spot. First you had the Indians. Then in the late 1600s, you had a Spanish mission here with friar monks. And then 1830s, it may have been Scots, I'm not sure. This is the remnants of an old tabby structure, tabby house. So uh, three generations of three different people during this period. And then the graves of the soldiers, interesting. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour. That was fun, just being able to see all those old sites. Uh, re really to see the recreation of the fort the way it was back, what, 300 years ago? That was really amazing. And then just the marshes and the beautiful, beautiful nature trail. Wow, that was such a treat. It was just absolutely stunning. I want to mention this again. Uh, I took a lot of photos aside from the video that really show up different when you use you know a nice camera with a lens i am going to put that on my gallery so if you go to ilovervlife.com and then if you look up at the top you'll see the gallery and uh, you can click there and then you can just see all the you know pretty pictures of the places that we visited and definitely you want to take uh, a look at some of these beautiful marsh shots and <laughs> the crabs skirting across the pathways and those types of things. It just makes it fun and just another reason why I love RV life.